it's Tiffany back with another creative flow project and today I'm doing something completely out of the norm and something I've never made before so enjoy this as we learn uh, um, so I'm going to be using watercolor paper you can use watercolor paper you could use mixed media paper you can really use whatever kind of paper you wanted to use. Anything that would hold up to a little um, watercolor. So we're going to make, drum roll please, we're going to make an art doll. Hmm. Have I ever made one before? No. Does my mind tell me that I'm a master of all things? Yes. Does it get me in trouble sometimes? Absolutely. So, I just jump right on in to drawing out a little whimsy doll. Oh, Lord, y'all. Sometimes I can just bite off more than I can chew. This is going to be a little bit of a lengthy tutorial, but we're going to learn from it as we go. So, really just the most basic of shapes when it comes to uh, dolls and faces. Um, nothing that you really need to fret over. Just basic lines and loops and moons and break it down to simple, simple shapes. And so, we're going to um, just sketch her out here with a mechanical pencil. Her neck was giving me a little bit of problems when I was thinking through like an art doll. Hmm. Yeah. So we're going to go back to the drawing board and actually make a little bit of a neck. Make a little bit of a um, sleeve for her. And going in with some loose uh, idea of where the hair will be. And what that's going to look like. And just messy and wavy and curly. Because yes I have curls, curls, curls. So I kind of like to put a little body in mine. And of course every lady should have a crown. So we're going to add a crown onto her. And guys we are going to be sewing her. So we're going to do her on paper first. And so we want to add a little watercolor. To bring out some color. And this is um, actually Erin, who's doing the other flow. She is also a master at watercolors. So she is making these watercolors. This is the Galaxy set. And dear Heavenly Father, this pink is amazing. And everybody in the whole world should walk around with pink hair. It would totally make my day. Um, so we're going to do this funky chick with some bright pink hair. Because she's cool like that. And I'm just using a watercolor brush to do that. So now I'm going to set it to the side. I'm going to grab the creative flow. If you don't know what I mean by the flow, please go back and watch the flow video. I have to use, the challenge is we have to use three of the items that the other person sent in a project twice a month. So this is the second one that we've done for the month of November. And so I'm just grabbing out a few things because the great thing about the flow is it's actually to be used taken out. So I'm cutting off little bits and pieces. I'm taking the um, tissue papers out that I think I might use and trying to decide exactly what I'm going to do. Then I think, oh, that may be a cool color for her um, dress. Just piddling around, deciding what I'm going to do. Tear that little piece off. I woke up with this crazy idea to make this doll. Lord help me, my ideas get me in trouble. And so I thought maybe she should be hold, could be holding a camera. That'd be cool. And so you just watched me kind of pick out the my fabrics for this doll. I like the black and white, so I'm going to pull that to the side. I love that paper. 
think that was like an inky paper. Um, a pro inky paper. Um, I'm going to look through here and see. Pins. Well, sewing. I thought that heart might be cute. I could stitch it on there. Just making sure I've surveyed all the stuff. And then I was like, oh, could I add a charm? That'd be cool. But nah, not going to. But I did see all of this fun material. So I was like, let's cut some of this ribbon off. Because we might need to use that. And so now I'm feeling fairly confident that I'm going to be able to make this work. And then I thought, okay, so what if I make her dress out of this fun inky paper? Yes, that would be awesome. So then I go and grab my carbon paper. If you've never used carbon paper, it's a great, it's a great way to transfer or trace something out easily so I'm going in with a carbon paper I'm gonna put the like scratchy graphite piece just to make sure that I can trace it and I'm gonna put that facing the um, inky paper make sure that I have it lined up which is Lord is difficult for me and then I'm going to go and I'm going to outline it so I'll go ahead and tell y'all this did not work I think it's because um, it was a little bit too faint, the lines were. So, I, I believe it was probably because the inky paper was on a fairly, like, lightweight paper. And I felt like I was pressing hard with that. But I couldn't really see it. So I was like, holy mother. So then I flipped it over and thought, well, if I did it on the, the white side... Okay, so FYI, I was not forward thinking in this situation. And well, you can't very well do that, Tiffany Danielle, because if you do, then your dress is going to be reversed. Ah, but I went ahead and left it out. So maybe you guys wouldn't make the same mistake because it was pfft, not a good way to go. Not a good way. So yeah, I went all the way through the process of fussy cutting this little skirt out, only to realize, my genius move, that it is backwards. And well, I mean, to be quite honest, you could have a white dress, but I didn't want a white dress. I wanted the pretty side dress. So, well, blah. So I'm going to go cut this baby out. Do, 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 do. Cut her little arms out. Which, by the way, I could have very well painted in. But you'll see kind of why I wanted to leave it in just a little bit. That's why I say, this. you know, you always run into some humps and bumps on the first time you ever do something. So, might as well learn from my mistakes. And then I realized, well, Tiffany, it's all jacked up. You're not going to be able to make that work. Because guess what? You flipped it around, moron. Okay, enough negative stuff talk. But I learned my lesson then. So, I went for plan B. Well, maybe it's plan C at this point. And I took the teal that had the little ruffly bit um, at the bottom. And I went ahead and um, used that to do the same thing. The carbon paper, flipped it around, do 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 traced it out. And this time I used a different pencil. To make the uh, lines a little bit darker, hopefully. And it worked fine, so. So now you see the pattern is on the top. It's going to fit just the way it's supposed to. And I'm going to just fussy cut it out real quick.
We live and we learn. All right, now my girl finally has some clothes. Thank goodness. And then I did make it a little bit short, but my little finger wave there was telling you it's going to be okay. We're, we'll figure out a way to make some length on that because there's no way in the Sam Hill that I was about to go and <laughs> redo that dress for the how many times? No. Nah. Not going to happen. So I'm going to glue that down with the Uhu glue stick. Any adhesive would be fine. And now our little hands is showing through. And I'm showing you that it's okay. Everything's going to be alright. No biggie. So then I decided, I'm trying to decide, I want to fill the crown with one of the collage papers that I have. So I'm just kind of tinkering with the idea, what would be best, and I thought, hot diggity dog, the Tim Holtz stuff is kind of transparent, and I can see the outline. So why reinvent the wheel? We already caught hell trying to get that dress done. Let's just cut this crown out and everything's gonna be all right so that's what I did so the key here is if you have transparent paper it is a whole lot easier to be able to see through than having to do the carbon paper blah 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 all right Whew, that's out the way all right so I have two papers is what I'm showing you I've done two and now I have this bit at the end that I'm trying to determine what I want to do. And I really like the way the black is. That chevron against the teal gives it a really cool contrast. And you know I'm not about that um, ruler and measuring and stuff. So I just eyeball it and cut a piece out. Trying to decide how I want to do her dress. All right, just going to cut that piece off there, and I can't cut straight, by the way, in case y'all are wondering, or you didn't know that about me, nah. So, I do the best I can, and I say, okay, that's going to be the bottom part of her dress. It's got a little ruffle going on in chevron. So, now, what are we going to do? We are going to go in those little scallops at the bottom and we're going to bring that pink from the from the top to the bottom there. And kind of bring that color down into her dress. I really love that color pink. success and now I'm just going in with a little bit of a blending stomp to um, try to create a little bit of shadow to her eyeball socket eye socket yeah eye socket not eyeball socket Tiffany and I was gonna go in with this neo color so what you're gonna see is that pink from the Celestial Pink Galaxy set is so bold that it was still in my watercolor brush so I just said, ah, okay, that's fine. We'll make it work. And you can see I'm going to pull a little bit of the color and then push it over to the other side. I do like a good rosy cheek, seeing as I always tend to have rosy cheeks. And so I just made it work. Then I'm going to go in with the, let's see, what am I going in with? I think that's a sweater weather. The leather boots, she has another set and it's like leather boots, but um, had to grab another brush there. So I'm just adding a little bit of color and that is one of the um, dots, the dot sheets with the uh, leather boots I believe. It's a really nice um, pale skin tone if you want to go with that. 
and I'm, I'm not coloring the whole thing. I'm just simply trying to bring a little bit of the color um, to her cheeks to make her look like she's alive. She's a doll, I know. But I wanted to make her look a little bit lively. And I just took the other watercolor. That's, I can't remember what the name of that is. And um, I'll try to comp, um, put it in the comments below in the description box. So just going to bring it all out and make her look beautiful. And I'm going to make sure I heat set it so that we can dry it really quick because it is watercolors. And then I'm going to go in with this very, I can't make it out what, what that color is. Something. It's the Woodland set uh, from Happily We Go, Erin. I just feel like it needed a little bit of gold. Little gold sparkles. Girl can't get wrong with a little bling, sparkly bling. Now I'm going to go in with just a regular pen. I think this is a Uniball pen. And I'm going to make those scallops pop a little bit. And so I've used three of the elements that I needed to use for the flow. Now I'm just, excuse my head in the way. I'm just going to darken in the eyes, and you'll see why. Just a minute. Just going to darken that, darken the lip line, and darken the nose, the features of the face. Go back in with the blending stump just a little bit. All right, so I'm happy with it. So now what's next? How am I going to turn this thing into a doll? Well, I'm going to take muslin um, muslin fabric, and I'm going to stick it down to a full-size sticker sheet. Now, you may know this as a label sheet, and all of the muslin and um you could do this with canvas too, but I wasn't sure how it's going to go in the printer. So, yes, we're going to put this baby through the printer. I'm straightening it out. I don't really care if I have green on my doll. I'll be okay with it. This is more of an experimental process because I just like to experiment like that. And I'm trimming it down to the size of a regular sheet of paper. So, full-size label sheet here. Full-size sticker sheet. Trimming it all the way down. And then I'm simply going to take that photo, um, that doll that I painted and did all that with, and I'm going to copy it, print it out onto this fabric. Ta-da! The camera cut off the magic of everything. So we're just going to make it work. So what I did is I cut around the sticker sheet, did all that. Now I have to create the back. So, just so, just going to slow down just a minute. Okay. I put that through my regular inkjet printer at home. Okay. It printed it out in a different color tone than what I had done. Now, what I will say is I'm pretty sure that they sell white muslin. Mine's not white. It's off-white. So, that means that the color is a little bit darker. So, now I'm going to take that sticker that I did, and before I make a oops again, I'm going to make sure that it works because I've already cut that out. I hope, hopefully, y'all are following me, okay? And then I'm going to take this because this is going to be the back side. Now, most people, like my mom's probably going to be like, well, you could have flipped it and you could have had like these really nice edges. And I'm not about that life. I like the rugged. So I want the stitches to be wonky. I want the fun and um, 
not so pristine stuffed animal. So if you seamstresses are watching this video, y'all don't go having no heart attack on me, sugar, because I don't really know anything. I've never even sewn but like one garment. And that was Halloween, which was like two weeks ago. And now I'm like feeling like, girl, I got this. I can make all kinds of things. Huh. Okay, y'all probably think I'm crazy. Anywho, I'm just going to simply cut this out, allowing myself what I've now learned to be seam allowance. You got to leave that seam allowance so that I don't chop this poor doll's head off. And then you must be saying, is Tiffany secretly like this great, um, what they call it, <laughs> free motion um, stitching and I've never even seen it. No, ladies, I'm not. I I did have a free motion um, foot, and then I don't know what happened to it. So, long story short, I'm just going to do it on the regular sewing machine. Just taking a little while. I added a little, when the camera cut off, because my battery died, um, I added a little bit of sparkle to the crown at the top. And so, this is what I said about I'm using my three things, but it's a little bit weird because it's not the actual things. I printed it out, made a copy. And now I play with the idea of adding some fabrics and I dilly-dally a minute trying to decide do I want to add something and I probably would but I was just wanting to do something basic to understand the process of how it really all came together so I go through all this and then I decide I'm just gonna leave it plain now this was actually what Erin had wrapped the flow together with in some tissue paper so I originally thought wouldn't it be cool to add this before I sew it all together add a little bow tie or something like that and I decided I just wanted to do the first one plain, even though this may be the only one, but you, you get my drift. So I tinker with that and decide, nah. A lot of tinkering went on with this doll, by the way. Although it would have been cute to add it there now looking at it on the camera but you know it's all good she turned out adorable anyway and then I thought hold on I think there was something in this little thing I could use And there was, there was a little star. And I thought, well, a star would be cute. I could put a star on there. And then I said, nah. But you know, that's how you learn what you want to do and what you don't want to do. It's just like placing it on there, taking a look. Do you like it? Do you not like it? And then kind of just determining from there. So I decided against it. I ran over there to the sewing machine. I went over there to the sewing machine and so I just stitched around it really roughly twice. So the first time I was really careful just to make sure that I had like caught all of the back and the front. And I left a hole in the bottom of it for us to put the stuffing in. Now this is just polyfill. You can get it at Walmart. You can get it at the craft department. Um, any of those places and it's just like the pillow stuffing so then I'm just going to take it and I'm going to use the um, help of a tool which I tried the pencil and it didn't work very well so I'm going to actually grab um, the uh, paintbrush end into the paintbrush and use it. it it went through there a little bit better so I'm going to stuff this baby with this polyfill get it all nice and filled um, you have to be careful because it's going through the um, the center of the neck there where the stitches are so it is a little bit tight but you got to stuff it 
um, so that we can finish sewing it up. <clears throat> I'm not going to make you sit through that. So, I go ahead, stuff it all together, and then I go through and close the bottom of it. So, the little hole that we stuffed the polyfill stuff, stuffing, we're going to go ahead. And then I'm going to just take and just cut off any of the excess around there. Like I said, I did go around it twice. Once to make sure I caught the bottom and the top together. And the second time was more of a... Um, just decorative fun funky I like the way it looks with two at least two um, stitches so what I would say is if you don't have a free motion foot which I do have one but I don't know how to use it and I don't know where it is so I just took my time it went slow stopped adjusted the fabric and then went around it again so <laughs> this was an interesting development in a creative flow but i did erin meet the goal in the challenge of using three of the um pieces that you sent me so i hope you guys enjoyed um this fun and uh funky doll that we made i hope you'll make your own don't forget to use our hashtag which will be listed below hop on over to erin's channel and let's see what she made this week using her creative flow i sent her thanks again for joining us guys i hope you'll subscribe to my channel leave me a comment give me the thumbs up give me ideas on what you like to see till next time to lose